Gilbert Clark, Meridian Mining, how are you? I'm very good. I'm very happy to be here in, uh, in Florida for the uh, Rick Rural Conference. It's, it's yeah, how's it going so far? Well, it's been quite interesting. There's all these waves of traffic go past and you, they're very sort of curious people. They take, the, they take the brochure, they I think they take it away to study it and later today I'll be doing a presentation on the company. So I'm, yeah, I'm quite happy with it so far. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the company. Well, actually before that, let's talk about the project. Uh, where are you at for people that don't know? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Meridian's developing the Capasal Volcanic Acid Sulfide Belt in Brazil. It's in southern Brazil, Mato Grosso, so it's not in the Amazon jungle. It's actually a, I guess we could call it a brownfields restart, partially mined, but with just all the exploration um, potential intact. So it's a very unique asset. Uh, we've been rapidly developing it over the last three years. Yeah, so you've been rapidly redeveloping it the last three years, but how did you find it? Oh, one of the very bizarre moments. So we were just restructured the company. Yeah. Um, it was the only restructure in the TSX history where post restructure, post recapitalization, the minority, minority shareholders came out owning 25% more than what they had going in. And I was looking for a new project for the company and I had a brochure passed to me by my geologist. And it just said, uh, Cabasal uh, XBP Minerals Project. And I went... Interesting. Interesting. Hang on, BP Minerals, what's this? So it used to be owned by BP. It used to be owned by BP Minerals, which is, yeah. you know, that oil phase of investment in the mining industry is what we are mining today, the, what these guys did back in the 1980s. And I went, geez, what an opportunity. Because yeah. we had 70,000 metres of drilling, um, 50 kilometers of first phase exploration go through. They found a small mine, they tried to develop it, they brought it into production, but mm -hmm. then they sold it to Rio Tinto in 89. Uh -huh. uh, and Rio Tinto went, we, we bought BP Minerals for Kennecott, this little thing we don't want, so they shut it down. It just really just bypassed the digital age, yeah. sat in the archive of Rio Tinto, sat in the archive of a, a private co in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Nice guys, but and then we just picked up this entire belt. Okay, so let me take a step back here and why I'm really curious why didn't they develop it? Is just they didn't know what they have and just fell through the cracks, or is it? Oh, it's a bit of a history. So when they were developing the Cabasal original mine, their cutoff grade was uh, I think it was three gram gold only. Mm -hmm. So all the other upside they looked at, they said, Well, we're here we've got a, some high grade gold veins. So, and so, so we'll focus here. Mm -hmm. um, but then as they went to uh, the first end of the first phase of development to expand it, BP Minerals went, well, look, the oil price is going up. So the parent company, BP, said, we'll focus on what we know and we'll sell this mining stuff. So this asset just sort of got given as part of a, uh, a package or sold as a part of a package to Rio Tinto. And Rio Tinder said, too small. Too small. So it just sat there for nearly 30 years until we picked it up. And you picked it up. Okay, so let's talk about the specific area that where you're at then. One of the, the most curious questions and what I want to know is, how much is it going to cost to build infrastructure there? Do you have to build all the infrastructure? So you mm. have the gold, you have it there. How are you going to get it out of the ground, infrastructure? Oh, so we've, we completed our PEA last year. And the capex to build this mine yeah. was about 180, including contingency, 180 million USD for a 2.5 million dollar plant. The power easements for electricity are already there, residual. So the electricity is already there. Yeah, the power, the easements are there. Uh, most importantly, in Brazil is concrete bridges. Remember why? Because it rains a lot. Right. In the, in, so we're not in the Amazon jungle. We're down in Mato Grosso, so it's farmland. But concrete bridges and then how close are you to a bitumen highway? We're right. 20 kilometers away. How many? 20 kilometers. From so 20 kilometers away from the major? Yeah. And that goes straight down to a town called Ronodopolis where there's a rail heading and that goes straight to the Port of Santos. So our infrastructure is really good. It's Why is our infrastructure so good? It's because it's a, a soya bean, um, cattle, sugarcane producing region. So all that infrastructure to handle high volumes is already there. So they have to haul that out, so it's yeah. already already yeah. there. So it sounds like this is pretty turnkey. It, it is. It's 
when you, you invest in mining, one of your biggest risks is you know deposit and metal. Yeah. You, know, you see a lot of companies have these seven, eight, nine, ten metallurgical flow sheets to get it right. Right. This ain't when it was in production for four years. We just took that flow sheet. Optimize it, modernize it, yep, straight away, we got what we wanted. So it's very important that for us as um, stewards of our shareholders' capital that we didn't take risks. So it was, we had all these aspects. Back in the 1980s, this should have been an open pit mine. They're mining underground at about 50 metres. The mineralisation actually goes to the surface. So yes, we had that deposit. We almost uh, tripled the length of the deposit for our, our drilling program. And now we're going down the phase of pre-feasibility, and then we'll go straight into feasibility. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to be—we've already started sort of bringing it on the horizon of the project finance banks, conventional project finance, debt and equity. Mm-hmm. Um, and we recently just uh, did a capital raise. We raised about twenty million Canadian dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, what's been interesting, like you asked, is it's turnkey, and that's a great term because turnkey implies low risk. Yes. Just, okay. What are you going to do? Yeah. And because we've always project ourselves as, okay, good, good rocks, plenty of upside, our share registry has changed from being almost 100% retail mm-hmm. to today where it's about 60% um, high net worth, long only funds, uh, and large, large funds. So it's been a great transformation for the company. Okay, so you hit on the next question that I want to ask. I want to delve a little bit more deeper into that is like me as a retail investor, you want to obviously you'd want somebody like me buying your stock to give you liquidity as well as put, push the stock up higher what are you doing for me to to protect me from dis, uh, dilution which again mm. shares i get that as long as it's going into the ground or going into to get the gold out and build the mine yeah. totally get that but yeah how am, how are you protecting me from being diluted unnecessarily and protecting me as a shareholder okay. well there's actually there's two aspects for the retail investor mm-hmm. okay the company has raised capital so we've got to promote deliver material advances to the project okay uh, additional exploration targets being converted into new prospects mm-hmm. which what we're doing we've got the principal deposit capital and now we're developing our second deposit St. Helena uh, that will come out we believe our resource will come out later in this year. Uh, so there's further upside. Mm-hmm. Secondly, is as a previous equity manager of, mm-hmm. of natural resource stocks, um, the most important thing for retail is to know how much exposure does do my shares have to the project? Yes. Okay, is there a stream there? Is there a third party free carry? Is there a massive royalty on it? Mm-hmm. How much of my ownership for, for future cash flow is going to be diverted away from my equities. Right. With us, uh, we've been very careful about this. Aside from the standard Brazilian statutory royalties, mm-hmm. our shareholders got 100% exposure to the project. The future pro- and that's so important for retail guys. Always yeah. look, okay, it, it, when it goes into production, yeah. what's going to be my exposure to the cash flow? Mm-hmm. So, you know, passive income. But most importantly, if there's an M&A opportunity, it's full exposure because when you've got an M&A, there's a, a long-term stream or long-term royalty on your equities. Well, that's that's going to be discounted on what you're going to get paid. Yeah. But that's very important. So there's two aspects to that, what your question, from my, my view. Yes, yeah. And now, let me talk real quick on what you just raised. How much cash did you just raise? We just raised uh, 20, 20, I think it was 20.1 million Canadian dollars. That's the next question I have. So you have a lot of cash in the bank. That's also, so you're not going away anywhere. No, no, no. We've, it's been quite interesting. Um, We, in the last two capital raisings that we've done, we've announced bought deals uh, and we've pretty much closed them after about an hour and a half, two hours, bang, done. And it's always with long only money. We don't see people, we don't do um, unit structures with warrants. Okay, you okay. don't. No. That was my other question. <laughs> no, we don't do that. Okay. Um, uh, they're really useful warrants at the early phase of the company. Sure. Uh, but along, particularly the US and European funds uh, don't like them. So yeah. we've really focused on that international venture capital okay. for this British company listed on the Canadian exchange. And that's been very, very, very positive for us. Okay. Lastly, uh, last question is, and correct me if I'm wrong, you said you're 60% 
strong hands is what I call owned, yeah. either by sticky hands. It, sticky hands, either by large uh, wealthy investors or uh, large institutions. Is that mm. correct? That's yes. We've um, we have groups now, um, high net worth that are you know high net worth by world standards, and we have funds. We have some of the top you know guys that the the funds assets under management exceeds you know one point x trillion so we're part of their portfolio not only for commodity exposure so copper gold commodity exposure but also for land time exposure so okay. it's a really it's a very unusual share registry for a, a company that trades at about 160 million market cap yeah so gilbert if somebody yeah. wants to get in touch with you wants to buy your stock give us your t uh, stock ticker and the company website uh, we're on the touch? tsx on yeah. the main board mno uh, we're on the OTCQX, I think it's MRRF. I think I'll just check on that one, guys. But we are, so we, we trade on the OTCQX, mm -hmm. um, Meridian Mining. Um, if you want to contact me, it's just go to our website, info at meridianmining.co. Email comes straight to me. Excellent. Gilbert Clark, Meridian Mining, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Take care.